All right, hi everybody. Let's take a look at a, a specific example of, of doing a limit using the, the uh, epsilon delta notation here, okay? And we're gonna look at just a, a linear function right now, but just to remember here that when I say that the limit as x approaches c of f of x equals l, what I mean by that is that I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna kind of hypothesize or state that there's gonna be this, this epsilon, this tolerance that's greater than zero can okay, we follow that through? It's greater than zero, but it's also greater than the absolute value of the distance between the function at some value of x minus l. And what, what we're saying by that limit there is that if, when we put that epsilon on there, when we put that tolerance on there, that the existence of that tolerance implies that there's this interval, okay, uh, around that c, that I'm looking at here, that as long as I get my x coordinate within that close enough to c that I'm smaller than some delta, that that will force my function to be less than epsilon away from l. Okay? Now, I know that's a little bit confusing to work through, and, and this does take a little bit of time to sit and, and noodle through here, but again, I, I drew that picture out for you uh, in a previous lesson there. I'm just going to take a look at some examples here. What we need to show here is that that epsilon implies the existence of a delta. So I'm going to state that there's, that there's some sort of tolerance that I'm interested in, and I want to show that that implies that I can get to within some delta of c. Now let's, let's use, for example, let's take a look at y equals 3x, uh, whatever, it doesn't matter, it doesn't really matter, let's say plus 5, okay? It really doesn't make any, any difference here. We're just going to take a look at a linear function to start off with. So. Let's determine what the limit is as x approaches 2 of 3x plus 5. Now, because this is a continuous function, okay, there's nothing, <coughs> sorry, there's nothing particularly weird about this, this line here. I already know that when I get moved closer and closer to 2 here, that this function here is going to move closer and closer to 3 times 2 is 6 plus 5 is 11. I already know that that's going to be true here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the the epsilon delta notation to show that that is actually the limit of, of this function as x approaches 2. So now to do that, what we're going to do here is I'm going to take a look at specifically the absolute value of my function here minus my proposed limit. And I'm going to, we're going to I, I post, uh, sorry, postulate some sort of uh, guess at some sort of limit here or tolerance, this epsilon. Uh, I can let that be whatever I want it to be, so I'll just leave it as epsilon for right now. So what this means here in this particular problem here is 3x plus 5, okay, minus 11. Okay, I'm just going to verify using epsilon delta notation that that is in fact the, the limit. We know that this is going to be less than some tolerance epsilon that we've decided on before this. Again, it, it doesn't really matter. I can make that however arbitrarily small I want, okay, as long as it's not zero make that however small I want. I want to just show that no matter what I make that, there's always a delta that goes along with that epsilon. And here's how I do it. Uh, so 3x plus 5 minus 11, that's going to reduce down to 3x minus 6, still less than epsilon. And then notice what I can do here. I can factor out the 3. So this is the absolute value of 3 multiplied by x minus 2, and that's going to be less than epsilon. Okay, now, multiplying by 3, and again, taking the absolute value, that's really not going to change the, the result here. I basically, what I'm saying is I can factor out that 3 out of the absolute value. Okay, multiplying by the positive 3 isn't going to change the value of the absolute value. It's still going to be positive, so I can do that. Then what I can do is, because this is a positive 3, I can divide both sides of that in equation here by 3 to get epsilon, whoops, I don't know why did I write that? Epsilon over 3. Now notice the form that this is in. x minus some value is less than some value here. Now, and notice that the number that's, that's right here, that is the c value that I'm approaching in my limit. So I was able to go from that function minus my proposed limit less than epsilon, and I was able to create the form of, of what that's supposed to imply, x minus my c less than delta. So as long as, I, if I let delta equal epsilon over 3, 
that's enough to, to support that that is in fact the limit. The existence okay, of some epsilon here does in fact imply the existence of that delta if I let delta equal epsilon over 3. Now, if you're like me, it looks like this particular example is like artificially uh, kind of grabbed to produce that nice little result right there. So let, I tell you what, let's do this again. Let's take the limit, but this time let's just change what we approach here. Let's, I don't know, let's make it different. Let's make it 8. Okay, the limit as x approaches 8. We'll still do uh, work with the same function here just so that you know that, that this works. Okay, now in this case again because this is a continuous function, if I plug 8 in, 3 times 8 is 24 plus 5 29. So there's, there's my proposed limit. I'm going to verify that that is in fact the limit according to the epsilon delta notation. So absolute value of 3x plus 5 minus 29. So there's f of x minus my L is going to be less than some proposed tolerance or epsilon. And again, I can choose that to be whatever I want as long as it's, it's uh, greater than 0. Now, this is going to be 3x minus 24 less than epsilon. And just like before, I can factor a 3 out of that. x, okay, uh, minus 8. And look at that. Look at what happened there. Isn't that interesting how that, that c value popped out again? Factor out the 3 out of the absolute value. So this is 3 times the absolute value of x minus 8 less than epsilon. And then once again, I can work it out like this. Divide both sides by that 3, I get epsilon divided by 3. So again, the delta that I'm creating here is epsilon over 3. So in this particular case here, the existence of this epsilon for this function implies the existence of the delta. Now that is going to be different for different functions, okay? And so let's just grab one more, just again to illustrate this one more time here. So let's grab a different function here. Let's take the limit as x approaches, I don't even know, let's come up with the equation first. Uh, let's, let's not make it too hard. Let's say 2x uh, plus, let's say 2x minus, uh, 2x minus 3. Let's let x approach, let's make it a negative number this time, negative 4. Now if I plug negative 4 into this, 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. Minus 3 is negative 11. So again, that's, that's the uh, limit that I'm going to approach here. So 2x minus 3 minus negative 11. It's going to be plus 11. And I'm going to show that that, as long as I let that or insist that that's less than some epsilon, that that will imply the existence of a delta. So let's simplify that. 2x plus, well, it's going to be 8, less than epsilon. Factor out the 2, x plus 4, less than epsilon. Take out the 2, x plus 4, less than epsilon, and I divide. Now bear in mind that that addition there is the same as x minus the negative 4. So that's the c value that I'm approaching. And I divide and I get epsilon over 2. So in this case here, my delta would be epsilon over 2. Whoops. So again, you're seeing that the, once we identify some sort of epsilon for this particular function, that implies the existence of a delta. So as long as I am, as long as the x value that I choose, okay, is less than epsilon over 2 away from my target value here, then that function is going to be less than epsilon away from that, that uh, limit because I can make epsilon as small as I want, I can get as close as I want to that particular value. Isn't that neat the way that works?